All right, we are live. Welcome, everyone, Humbot community. Welcome to another live show where we show a bit more of our what's going on behind the stages with Humbot. And today we're going to bring something new and something different for the next release. That uh, is, I, if I'm not wrong, we are around a week away from, from the next release, where uh, besides some of uh, improvements and updates, we're going to launch uh, a brand new strategy. It's a market making strategy, like the one that we already have, right? The pure market making. And, but the difference is that it's based on uh, an old, not old, but uh, already established um, scientific papers for uh, quant trading. So here with me, we have Nico. He's one of our developers. He was the one that worked mostly on the, on the, on creating the strategy, adapting the, the information from the paper to the, hey everyone, to an actual strategy. So uh, first, let me introduce to you these two guys here. Sharing screen. All right. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we have these two guys, Marco Avellaneda and Marco Avellaneda from the uh, uh, NYU, New York University, and Sasha Stoikov. They are the guys that wrote the paper and basically trying to do a quick resume about it. What they did is model how the, the market works, the, the movements inside the, the micro market strategy to reduce the risk of the, reduce the inventory risk and um, try to, to uh, create a logic behind some, some rules to automate and make the, the, the market make it trading use it by algorithms, make it more efficient and re actually the, the, to reduce the, the order book risks. So if you want to screw, if anyone is curious, sorry about my, my stuttering today, uh, these papers are free. So if you Google the name of these two guys, you easily find it. Uh, if you like to read scientific papers, it's a really interesting read. You see a lot of formulas and uh, Anyway, let me jump right to the finish of it. What I want basically to show is, what is it uh, here? Basically, he simulated two situations using his, the, uh, the rules they created, the algorithm and the, the logic they created, and uh, uh, do the same work, the same orders, doing market making but with a symmetric uh, bid and ask spread where the bid and ask spread will keep constant over the, the along the day, right? So they find that uh, with their approach, they have a very similar profit, but with the smaller variation of the inventory. So what this means is uh, they got a, uh, similar profitability of the strategy, but reducing the inventory risk, right? So this, this is the base of the, the, the whole strategy. There's a lot to go happening behind the, the, the strategies. So yeah, our, our code is open source. So if you want curious, you can also uh, mess a bit with it. Uh, take a look how it works, how implemented. And I'll pass on to Nico so he can show a bit more of his work, what he done, and uh, some of the okay. interesting things he 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 discovered while implementing it. Uh, could you please uh, allow me to share? Oh or... yeah, um, I. Okay, here. I... Oh, hold on, what is it? Yeah. Um, can you share now? See, yes, yes. Okay, nice. Now. Okay, so do you see my screen? Yes, all good. Okay, 
Well, so um, here's some internal documentation that we worked on uh, based on, on the paper. Um, originally, the paper is uh, centered around um, some parameters that need to be calibrated in order to um, optimize the, the market making to the, to the assets actually being traded. And um, what we've done is in order to have a um, simpler approach and for users not needing to do these um, calibrations, uh, we've uh, devised a way to automate the calculation of these parameters um, based on simple questions to the user, such as what's the minimum spread that you want to uh, trade with, what's the maximum possible spread, and um, what is your um, threshold to, to volatility, like how sensitive you want your algorithm to be to, to volatility, and also um, how averse are you to inventory risk. So uh, if, you find, if you read the paper, these are the, the original formulas for um, the, the variables that are going to be calculated in order to set up the final spreads. Um, but we um, devised um, certain additions or extensions. It's like a remix <laughs> of the strategy, um, working on the, the way Hummingbot uh, trades. For example, um, order amounts being uh, fixed initially, uh, the volatility actually not being constant, and um, the mar market trading uh, time horizon to be not a fixed time horizon, but actually to trade in a 24-hour uh, period, like the cryptocurrency markets. Um, so, well, this, um, this algorithm is based around these questions that I just mentioned, which later on, I guess, Paolo will, will show a demo of it. And um, there's also some ideas that are being borrowed from the originally, uh, in original inventory skew from, from Hummingbot. So if you are a familiar user of Hummingbot, you will already know that there's in the market making strategy, a module called um, inventory skew calculator or inventory skew, where basically the order amounts are set up in a way that the um, bid and ask orders are not the same uh, in terms of order amount. So by doing that, you're going to be shifting your inventory towards the desired target. Well, this is sort of an extension of that idea, but also working with the spreads related to the mid price. Um, there's um, this uh, expert mode are in which you set up yourself the parameters directly. There's no intermediate calculations at all. And then there's this um, basic mod, um, basic mode in where you are asked questions related to, to what I've mentioned before, the spreads and, and stuff. Um, so okay, yeah. So yeah, get yeah, stop there on the reserved price and optimal yes. spread. Yes. So uh, resuming what the paper talks about is that uh, at the end of his calculations, of their calculations, they reach to basically two formulas. One is reserved price. That is a reference price that will change over time depending on what is the current inventory. So let's say, for example, if I have uh, my inventory is totally on USDT, what will happen is that this reserved price will be higher than the market price. So when I set my, my when I create my orders, 
they will the bid and ask spread they will be referenced with this reserved price so what means that my bid order will be way closer to the to the market price increasing the chances of this this order being filled and uh, getting back my inventory to my target uh, that I'm assuming we want 50 50 yeah. percent on each parameters the second yeah, one correct, correct. yeah okay go on no, yes, uh, as, as you, you just you just said, what what does it mean to 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 shift or change the spreads to meet the target? Well, you want to increase the probability of the bid or the ask to be executed when you are in deficit of inventory to reach your target or with superavit uh, with excess of inventory to reach your target. Um, that's uh, the, the reasoning, the rationale behind the, the spreads being changed to, to meet the inventory. And you can think of the extreme case where you just uh, met your target for the inventory. Let's suppose that you have exactly the amount to reach the, the, the final target. Then the spreads intuitively will turn to be symmetric towards the mid price. Yeah. While if you are in an other extreme case where you have like zero of one of the assets and 100% of the other, then your spreads are going to be super shifted towards the, 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 the buying of this asset where you have zero uh, in order to, to reach your inventory. Yeah, exactly. So when you have a situation, let's say the target is to have 50% of each asset, uh, on this situation, if this situation is read, what will happen is that the reserved price is going to be equal to the mid price. So your bid and ask order will end up being symmetric. As the, the inventory uh, positions change, the, the reserved price will change and your distance from one side or another will be different, right? right. right. So the second parameter he calculates is the optimal spread. That is um, basically he takes some theory about market modeling, microstructure, and he wrap it up on a formula that uh, it's the basically says what should be the spread from the mid price to uh, have a higher possibility that both orders would be uh, filled. So you have my bid and my ask being completed. So uh, there's two key factors here. That's two, two parameters. Uh, when I'll show on the bot uh, when I, I, a bit later. But basically, one is the gamma that uh, represents what's the risk that uh, the, the trader wants to take. And the kappa that represents what's the condition, what's the situation of the order book, right? So these are the two parameters that will define the, the optimal bid and ask spread. And we have volatility that would uh, make some changes depending on how volatile the market is. So what Nico was explaining a bit about the beginner and the expert mode is that uh, the expert mode is based fully on the paper where you would be the one to define what's the gamma, what's the kappa value, right? So you would have to, to, to have your model, have your, your process to, to find these two values. So uh, it will be more um, based on an information that you already have, your already process. And the beginner mode is a uh, simplification approach that we had, that we establish some, some parameters, some assumptions. So we could find a way that the bot would automatically calculate gamma and kappa. So a good example that Nico gave an idea is that if you buy a professional uh, camera, photo camera, you can use it on automatic. So everything, every parameter that you have, you could add like type of lens, uh, 
aperture. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not much of a photographer, so I don't know exactly the terms. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the, the, the shutter time, the sensitivity, the, the, the focal length. Yeah. Yeah. If and, you, and you will set it uh, yeah. automatically. You set to automatic, the, the camera will do the work to, to try to find the best parameters to, to take the photo. But if you are you have more knowledge about the, how to use the camera, about photography, you could do yourself set up the, the, the parameters from the camera to get a, a better picture, to get a better uh, result if you know exactly what you're doing, right? So it's like, like Turboman said right there on the, on the chat that... Uh, it was the, the why we created this beginner mode, because uh, as we did the research, we found that there is a lot of different approaches to calculate to, to calculate gamma and kappa. So we didn't want to pick a specific approach to, to do this, but we, we established some, some limits, some, some assumptions. So we could make the bot calculate the, the automatically the, these parameters, right? Uh, so, it, mm, so just to, to conclude this, as uh, Traffic Adventures was saying on the chat also, the kappa is a parameter that basically uh, represents what's the, the, the condition of the order book. So if you have an order book that have too much volume, right? you would have a kappa, I don't remember right now, if it would be big or... So, so if the order book is very liquid and there's a lot of, of depth in orders, you will, your spread will be smaller. So you can get a smaller spread with equal chance of executing your orders. While on the contrary, if you have a very um, small order book with uh, uh, a little amount, little amount of orders, your spreads are going to be higher because there are less participants in the market adding liquidity. Yeah, so, so you that's... Get, you, you need to have a, 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 small, a bigger spread. Yeah, so that's the, the function of the kappa. And we found some different ways to, to calculate it. So uh, if anyone that already knows the strategy want to already have a way to calculate the, the kappa and the gamma, and they could use. So let, uh, let me share my screen now. Sure. Let me show the, the strategy working. Um, just one more thing. Like I've just shown uh, something which is uh, internal here, but from this material, we will um, resume this and generate like a, a paper or a, or a, and a blog post uh, talking about the, the details about this strategy. Yeah, we're gonna have some some more uh, detailed explanations for for you guys that want to try it. Okay, so here is our old and good humming bot. So as always, the first step after you connect the, the the to the exchanges, you're going to hit create, right? So uh, the we are using a code name here, field fair, right? So it's not necessarily the, the final name of the version. We're still talking about it, but uh, there you go. You set create, you choose your exchange, you set your pair just as usual well, as any other strategy. So you set your si order size. And here's the first question about the strategy. Do you want to automate the parameters? This is where the, the beginner and expert uh, part that Nico explained come come in place. If you set to true, you're going to tell the bot to automate it, calculate calculate the the parameters in an automated way. So I'm going to set for now true, uh, just to show how it works. And the next question will be what's the minimum spread allowed for the mid, mid price. So basically, what's the the limit? from the, the mid price of the market that the minimal limit. So if you set uh, 0 0.1, the price will never go, the spread of your order will never go below 0.1%, right? If you set 1%, it will never be 0 0.5, 0 0.3, right? So let's say 0 0.1. And the other size, 
you also set the limit that is the maximum. So if you set to 2%, uh, the orders will never be created at 3, 4, 5%. So this is actually pretty interesting to, to, to use with uh, the liquidity mining because the liquid, our, our campaigns on liquidity mining have a, a maximum spread that you are allowed to use <clears throat> for your orders to be counted for the, for the miner. So you can basically use this as the maximum order you wanted to, the bot to use, right? So let's set 2% here. So the volatility threshold multiplier, this is um, a number that you want to, for the bot to use as a reference to change things a little bit if you have a big increase of volatility on the market, right? So this is a bit more tricky to explain uh, here live, uh, uh, we'll be we'll have more detail about it on the on the article, but basically you're saying that uh, kind of if the volatility go beyond uh, your spread times the multiplier goes above it, your maximum spread will increase. So in this example, if it's to if the situation where I have a huge volatility increase. Uh, where I don't know the volatility will jump to three percent, my the bot will automatically increase your maximum spread, so you could uh, take advantage of this increased volatility and you take better price on on your trades temporarily as the volatility is on this uh, unusual state. Let's call it like that. So let's set it to one here. The inventory risk aversion is more as um, a parameter that you want, you are telling the bot how much, uh, how aggressive, basically aggressive, you want the, the orders, the bid and ask spread to change to reach the inventory uh, target you want. So if you set on the maximum level, uh, close to one, the, the bot will try to more aggressively uh, put your, your, your orders spreads in a place where you, it will increase the chance of a, they being filled if you have uh, your inventory is on a different place from your target. So for this example, I'm going to set to 0999, uh, the usual time to cancel be the nice spread. So let's add 60 here. And the last one, I think it is, uh, the inventory target you want for the base assets. So if you want to have half of the total value of your inventory on both assets, you set 50, so it will be 55%. The bot will always uh, set the spreads in a way that the 50-50 the, the, the will more likely to, to be to be rich. Let's say if you want to have 100% in BTC, if you're trading the BTC, you could set this to 100. So the bot will try to buy more BTC. Your bid spread will be smaller than the sell until you reach the situation where you have 100% uh, of BTC in your, in your balance, right? So let's set to 50 as usual. And here's the name, right? And there we go. We hit start. Uh, you'll notice uh, something that's a bit different here, right? There you go. You see a message calculating volatility. So we, what happened is that the bot, before it starts, it needs to have a, a volatility parameter. So it will take a few seconds. Actually, you define what is the, the, the time you want it to how many data, how much data you want for the bot to use. So it will add the price information to a list so we can calculate the volatility in a, in a proper way, right? 20 more seconds. Right, so here there's like a, 
decision that you have to take. You either give more time for the bot to calculate volatility, and in that way, you will have a more accurate number, or if you allow a small time, you will have a number that will change a lot, but it will be more quicker to react to changes in the volatility. Yes, indeed, that's the, the, the idea. I'll show what's the parameter uh, later. But here we have it, the bot is running. So as you can see, I set my, my uh, inventory parameter, the, my risk parameter to in a way 0 0.99. So the bot right now at this situation, he is forcing a bid spread really closer to the, to the market price because I have less uh, uh, XEM on, the, on, my, on my inventory. So I have more USDT, I wanted to reach the 50-50% situation where I want it balanced. So <clears throat> the bots reading that uh, since I want to, I have, I want to, to keep my inventory close to 50 uh, with that 0 0.99, the bots aggressively trying to, to rebalance the inventory, right? right. So yeah. two it, more things. But also, okay, so. Oh, sorry. Go no, on. Yeah, no, I was go gonna on. say, I was gonna say that if you feel this is like too much information being shown, this is in debug mode so far. The final release won't show up these messages like in every second, but this is for us to see like what's the internal calculations the bot um, it's uh, calculating in every second. Yeah, exactly. So here is three interesting information you see here on the status screen. You see right right besides the mid price, that's the market price. You see the reserved price. So this is the, 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 the price that we talked it, uh, a bit earlier. So as you can see, uh, my reserved price is higher than the, the, than the market price. So what means is that uh, the, my reference to create my, my bid and ask order is going to be uh, higher than the market price, right? So that means that my, my buy will be way closer to the market price. The second thing, is the strategy parameters. So we are showing here the calculation, the automated calculation that's happening for gamma and kappa, uh, right? So these values sometimes can appear to be really big. And indeed, it's in some time, depending on the market, when we have markets that the, the reference point is really small, like the we have right here, that's 0 0.34 cents. Uh, these values can go on really, really uh, big, right? So let me let me stop here just to show something. I'll change the inventory risk aversion here now to 0 0.5, right? So with 0 0.99, we were getting a really aggressive buy. The bot were really, really trying to buy to bring the, the my inventory back to 50%. So I reduced it this, this, this value. So I want it to be a bit more balanced. So when I start again, it will start to read the price data to calculate the volatility. And in a few seconds, 45. We should set up some music here. <laughs> yeah, let's let's add some some elevator music. <laughs> the, uh, hey, I, I, you can sing also, Nicholas, if you want. Ah, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but this is quick, quick. Twenty seconds now. So yeah, like I said, this is the the automated way, the easy mode. Let's call it because uh, everything is kind of the majority of the parameters being calculated by the bot. But um, if- Yeah, you can also see that the parameters won't even stay constant because what we are doing is like saying, oh, the volatility has changed too much. So then we recalculate the parameters in a very ideal way or mode. If, if volatility stays constant, 
which is an assumption made by the paper, you will not you will not need to 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 change these parameters. But since things are dynamic, yeah. uh, parameters are changing all the time. Yeah. So exactly, basically, if you want to run more uh, close to what the paper uh, states, you can add these values manually. I'll show it soon. So here it is. As you can see, I reduced the, the inventory risk uh, tolerance. Uh, and as you can see, I don't have the, the buy order so close as 0.1%, right? But I still have a, a buy order closer than the sell. So I'm still trying to buy more, but not as much I was before when I really wanted to rebalance my inventory, right? So they, this is the, basically the, the big difference between the, these values. Okay, so let me show now the config. We have a few different um, configurations that we added that the first one, uh, the, the first one are the ones that we already went through. That's a, the order optimization enabled where you say the bot wants to cal automatically calculate. So let me stop here and change it. So we can show the next part. Change it to no. Right. Okay, so no, I, I, sorry, I, I changed the wrong configuration. All the op optimization is something different. It's something that we already have on the bot that uh, the bot tries to, if it's close to the, um, to the mid price, really close to the mid price, it, it will try to, to get a better position on the market, right? What I want to change is parameters based on spread. So I want to set it to false. And here the bot is gonna ask, what's going to be the order book depth, the, the kappa, the let's say 0 0.001, and what's the risk factor? The risk factor, I don't remember if I mentioned, but this is more like, uh, usually this is more, if you enter manually, is more as a option, more as a decision from the trader. So when we enter a gamma bigger, you are trying, you are going to force more to, to change the reserved price. The difference between the mid price and the reserved price, we, or, sorry, the difference between the reserved price and the mid price, if your gamma is as bigger, uh, it will also increase, right? If you set a parameter close to zero, what will happen is that uh, the bot will end up uh, doing symmetrical orders over time, right? So. Uh, it would be the same as if you were just uh, create bid and ask order at a set fixed uh, parameter. Well, not exactly fixed because the optimal spread is still being calculated, but they will always be symmetric. Your reserved price will always be equal to the mid price, right? So let's set a pretty high value here. Uh, this uh, order amount shape factor, we haven't talked about it yet. Mm -hmm. But this is uh, another story, but we'll detail more on the article. But this is a, a small factor that we pulled from a different paper that it, uh, what it does is basically we'll set some parameters. Help me here, Nico. Uh, um, yeah, so it, it's uh, related to the original inventory skew used in the pure market making, where you change the order amount of one of the two orders based on what's your target. So, yeah. um, and uh, we, we uh, can can you scroll up in the in the left screen? Or uh, I'm not sure if you can. Here? No, well, in the, in the well, no, 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 yeah, no. Uh, yeah, go go uh, before you stop the um, the. Didn't we have a status? Yeah, okay, well we we, we didn't. Yeah, I didn't oh, say. But it. the the order amounts uh, in this in these cases where we run the were not equal. I, I think Paulo said uh, two hundred as order amount, but you could 
uh, see that it could be seen that for the buy order, it was 200, but for the sell order, it was less than 200. There was an adjusted uh, amount, and that's related to this parameter. If, that's how how do way. we how do we set uh, same order is zero, right? Zero. Set zero. To zero. If you set it yeah. to zero, it, it won't be won't have effect. Yeah. Okay. So let's just show here that now we have kappa gamma and eta it, uh, set uh, manually set. So you'll see uh, things a bit different on the as the bot executes. We just have to wait a bit more sixty seconds. <clears throat> you can change the, this the, the, this timing, right? But um... right, and you and you already have the parameter set, so now the status will stay exactly. Fixed. So it won't be recalculating the the these two values, gamma and kappa. Thirty seconds. We're going to launch launch a rocket soon. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, close. Ten seconds. Nine, eight, <laughs> seven, five, four, three, two, one, and we're on our way to Mars. All okay. right, so as you can see, <laughs> the bid and ask spread is really, really big, right? So yeah, the bot went a bit crazy here because uh, I haven't properly done the calculation what this should be. So this, there's a bit more behind it if you want to find the, these true values, right? <clears throat> yeah, so, so the bottom line is that you need to do the math before to yeah. know which number to place in here. And you, it will still be fixed without any change, uh, even when volatility changes. So you should really know what you're doing if you <laughs> are yeah. uh, using the expert mode uh, in the manual mode. Yeah, indeed. Okay, so let yeah. me get back to the automatic. Uh, yeah. in, in the meantime, while Paulo is setting the automatic, I have some uh, results to, to show. I've been running a strategy for, for quite some time now, and I will show you some cool plots of how does the strategy behave when, yeah. but when time goes by. All right, but before you do that, let me talk about two things that will be important for to show. That's two parameters here. That is the um, closing time, Right, so what closing time does is the the paper, the assumption from the original paper was that you had a starting trading time and a stop trading time, right? So let's say on the traditional market, you start the market opens at 10 a.m. and closes at 5 p.m. So this closing time that you have on the on the on the paper is basically that setting that uh, the ideal situation for the market maker would, would be to close the day uh, with an inventory position that's pretty much the same as the, the, the starting of the, the trading session, right? So this is why he have this, this, this parameter. What we did here is since, uh, since uh, crypto markets is 24-7, we don't have a beginning and end and start and finish of a trade session. So we set it more like uh, an open, an open, uh, how do I say, an open parameters where, where it will kind of simulate as if the, the, the session would be, uh, have a starting to end and, and close. But uh, like it's, a uh, trading session would start immediately after the last one closed. So it will be constant, but you have a fixed reference time. If I said, for example, one day, uh, it will be calculated as if every 24 hours, it would be a trading cycle, right? So I 
uh, if I remember, one hour, 0 0.047, I guess, right? No, 416. Uh, 416, yeah. That's it's the, 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 the one the, the default ID number four. you have, we have, right? And the last one is about the volatility, right? It's the config volatility buffer size. So this is, you're the, telling the bot how many seconds it will uh, use, how many seconds that you use to calculate volatility. So in this case, 60, it will be using, calculate the volatility of the last one minute. If you set 3600, it will uh, calculate the volatility of the last one hour. Uh, the small thing here that we're still working on, on a better way to do this, is that the strategy we can only start if you have the volatility or else the, the parameters won't be calculated. So this is something that we're still discussing how to improve this part, but uh, that's it. If you want uh, one hour, volatility of the last one hour, you just increase this, the size of this, this parameter. Basically, that's it. So let me send to Nico so he can show the really interesting drawings that the, the, the bot <laughs> did. Yeah, we're all here for the plots, right? Yeah. So <laughs> I'm going to show you. So while we were talking and before, I've been running this strategy uh, in automatic mode for uh, this pair in MFT USDT. It's been for three hours running. And uh, I've set it for 50-50, just as the example Paulo gave. And you can see that it's already there, like ar around the, 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 the final target. Um, and this is cool because we have a profit. So we've reached the target starting from from almost zero and we've uh, achieved some profitability. So that's the kind of thing we want, right? <laughs> um, this is um, in our debug mode, dumping a lot of data for us to debug. And I uh, built some, some, some script for plotting these internal calculations and uh, and, and to show the, the evolution of the spreads and of, of the inventory. Let me show you real quick an example of this strategy and I'll go through these plots. So let's start with uh, this one. You can see that there's uh, multiple uh, prices here being shown. Uh, you can see the blue line, that, that's the mid price. That's the, 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 the price the, the asset is. Uh, the, the real price. mid, yeah, the market price, correct. Um, there's also uh, bid and ask, and, and also uh, the, the spreads uh, used by the, the algorithm. And then you can see that there's the reserve price. I will try to zoom a little bit more. Oh, just before I zoom, this is the inventory of the asset that we want to, to meet the, the target. See yeah, that the dot line is the target. Right, yes, the dot line, the dotted line is 50%. See that it, we're starting in zero. So we are really far from our target and this is starting from, from scratch. So let me, um, okay, so the graph is, okay, so sometimes this happens. This is real TV <laughs> and sometimes things fail. So let me see if I can zoom. Oh, there you go. Um, so you can see that the reserve price is be, uh, above the mid price. And this is quite reasonable, right? Because we want to buy, we want to buy, and actually we want, we want to buy a lot. We want to reach 50-50 and we are starting in zero. So we need to uh, move our orders towards a uh, more uh, probability of, of buying or, or of executing a buy order. So that's why our reserve price is above the, the mid price because we want to bid in a higher price. If you bid in a higher price, you have more pro probabilities of, of executing that order, right? Because you're closer to, to the mid price. And you can see that the optimal ask, which is the, the red uh, line, is um, it, it's going sometimes above 
the um, the best bid uh, uh, currently in in the market. So that's um, quite reasonable, right? If you are aggressive, trying to to buy more. Um, the last plot is the volatility, which is just to for informative purposes, and um, there's an additional uh, help here of these vertical lines that are um, showing when does this uh, time, this trading cycle that Paolo mentioned, uh, finishing. So yeah, the, the, whenever the closing time, the closing time parameter. The, the closing time, right. Whenever there's a vertical line, you can see that, um, I will zoom here, you'll see that the spreads, um, if I move here, the spreads initially start the bigger between reserve price and mid price. And as you go to the closing time, they will tend to um, meet. And that's uh, related with the, with the paper and its, its reason like uh, for traditional markets where you have a starting, well, the, the start of the, of the market day and, and, and the end, uh, you, you, you if you want to, to deepen on this, you, you can uh, read the, the paper and read our, our blog post we're, we're gonna be submitting. But then after the reset of the cycle, it will restart the spreads and it will go all over again, this um, shrinking of this uh, distance between the reserve price and the mid price. Yeah, basically it will be like uh, in a traditional market. Basically, it will be the starting of a new trading session of a new day. Right, correct. So in this case, I, I just wanted to make uh, uh, something real quick to show. So I picked a very small cycle. In this case, this cycle is 10 minutes. So in three hours, we have gone through many cycles. And as you can see, it started in zero, and uh, as cycles progressed, we were uh, getting close to to the to the target. And once the target is achieved, uh, what happens is that if there's an overshoot and you go beyond your target, then the spreads will um, will switch, will will turn around. Uh, let me show you an example. So well, this is probably not a good example because it's just close to the, but here that might be a good example. So here we are above the dotted line and the, the relationship between the mid price and the reserve price is, is one. But then if we go below the, the green line turns to be above when it was before it was below. So that's uh, the things uh, between like spread and what we want to to achieve in inventory that I was talking about. Then yeah, it's interesting that you can see that after some time, the inventory doesn't change much on one direction or another, right? It basically, it, it's go, it keeps going around the 50%. Right. Yes. Yeah, you still want to, to, to execute orders, right? Because you're market making, but you will uh, pay attention to the relationship and trying to uh, oscillate around the, the target. Uh, this, uh, there's uh, this additional uh, plot that I wanted to show you. And this is the distance that I was talking about between the reserve price and the mid price. You can see that it's like, uh, initial uh, amount, which then um, goes to, to zero. And uh, the, um, the amplitude of this distance will be related to this uh, initial parameter that Paolo was talking about, this uh, inventory risk aversion, right? Uh, you can think of intuitively that if you want to be more aggressive, you want to have your spreads more asymmetric and to have the, these spreads uh, more asymmetric, you want to uh, have your reserve price distance to the mid price higher. Uh, so then in, in the second plot, oh the, yeah, the, then you can see that th this thing goes from negative to positive 
and this is related to the, to the inventory oscillating, right? So suddenly you wanted to buy, but then you wanted to sell because you're in beyond, below, beyond, below, and that's the these oscillations. But then see the bid price and the ask price to meet uh, price um, uh, spread, and you can see that all the time these spreads are asymmetrical. There's not a single moment where spreads are symmetrical to the mid price. The only place where they are symmetrical is right at the end of the cycle. You they will meet each other, so that there will be like a traditional, let's say, um, uh, spread, which is a bid and ask uh, in the same distance to the mid price. But then it, it will restart again the, the cycle, and it, it will be like. Um, decreasing as as the as the trading cycle go, reaches the end, and uh, again, well, the, this is like switching positions whenever the inventory um, goes from one uh, direction to the other, and uh, well, this is a really cool result, right? <laughs> you are reaching your your inventory, you are keeping it, although volatility has some spikes there. Yeah, to be honest, this is not like super high volatility. It's 0.4 percentage. Uh, we would maybe show in, an, in another uh, <laughs> session uh, a very stressed scenario of volatility where the, these um, spreads will move away from these dotted lines, which are the maximum spread and the minimum spread in order to adjust to, to that uh, scenario. And uh, and well, this is, this plot is not so interesting. It's uh, to to see if uh, from the restrictions that we set, which is the mean price and the max price, uh, sorry, mean mean spread and max spread, if we are going a little bit above or or below, and you can see that here it it's happening, and this is related with the volatility changing, but this is very uh, small uh, difference, uh, which is then. Um, Handled by the hummingbot uh, bot uh, by by clipping all these all these uh, excesses. Uh, so yeah, that's what I wanted to show you. Uh, mm. Very nice, uh, very nice. Yeah. yeah so uh, just uh, one small detail is that uh, although this graph looks really cool, they take a lot of resources from the bot, so they they won't be basically shipping with the with the final version or, or else you can have some performance issues. So it doesn't make much sense to have a bot that underperform just because it's creating a report. So, uh, all right, uh, that's the, the full presentation of, not full, there's a small details. We're going to cover on future articles, but it's the majority of it, at least. I hope it, uh, it helped you guys understand uh, what's behind the strategy, what's the theory behind the strategy, and what's trying to do that uh, uh, going back a bit to the paper is the main objective of uh, a Velaneda and Stoikov paper is to reduce the inventory risk, reduce the, how much the, the inventory changes during a, a trade session, right? So, well, that's it. I don't see any questions on the on the chat. So, last chance. Uh, so, Nico, do you have any any final statements to make? Uh, uh, well, yeah. Um, I think that uh, besides the the strategy for for the common user who will just use it, uh, that's cool. But I would uh, invite you to to check the the, the code because uh, it's uh, adding some functionalities that you might find interesting maybe for the future in the Hummingbot, uh, which is uh, like this trailing uh, volatility calculation, which could easily be adapted to any other thing other than like volatility. So stay tuned for the for the release and. Hope you make more money with this strategy. <laughs>
yeah we all do <laughs> <laughs> nice okay so uh yeah next release michael answered it, answer it early april at uh, beginning of next month uh, uh if it's on the dev version yes it is on the dev version but we are still working a bit on fine tuning a few parameters we we uh, kind of still have uh, small adjustments of small calculations that were adjusting before the release. So if you want to use the, the, the dev branch, uh, do it, but uh, know that At your own some, risk. Yeah, there is some some unknown risk basically there, right? All right, all right. I think that's it. It this was a big one, one hour. Interesting topic. Yeah. We'll probably have Thank more. You. All right. See everyone. Bye. If you want to have more questions, find us on Discord. We all are always there to try to, to help everyone to, to with the bots configuration, 24-hour support, and everything. So just wait the announcement, and we'll soon have it on the new release next April. Bye. See you all. Bye. And happy trading. <laughs>